Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Passive Money Plan. And let me tell you, we're not like the rest of the people on social media that want to give you all the fluff and all the good stories about being in certain investment products. We just give you the real life endeavors of it. So currently right now, boy, Alex is uh, just closed on another rental property. And uh, and we're going to talk about, you know, what he's going through as because Alex, just a little background. Alex, unlike me, me, I'm I'm super, uh, super duper lazy. Uh, that's what I'll call it. Uh, what I mean by that is when I acquire properties, I pass them off to a property manager. When Alex uh, acquired properties, he manages them himself. Uh, so we're going to go with Alex. And I think like 95% of my properties are managed by a property manager. I, own. I manage maybe 5% of them myself just because a certain situations and certain contracts that I have set up with uh, a couple of them. That's why I do it. Um, but Alex is going through it, just going through the process right now, again, of acquiring the property um, and then placing tenants. So we really want to get into the tenant placement part of it. Uh, we'll go, Alex, let's just start at the, the part of you got the property and then you rehab the property. Uh, so where are we at in the, in the uh, process after acquiring the property and what you're going through? So right now it was just a matter of listing the property on different websites, realtor.com, avail.co. They have a whole bunch of other ones, Zillow, Facebook, just trying to get it out there, publicize. And then speaking with prospective tenants and looking out for applications and then just trying to get it rented out. Okay. For that, for that, uh, you know, mom and pop landlord that that wants to, I mean, or somebody that want to get into, you know, rental properties or something like that. And then they worry about, okay, I want to get a good tenant and I, you know, want to, you know, want to do, you know, when this is with a property manager, they do background checks and criminal checks and, um, and credit checks, say criminal checks, credit checks. Uh, what do you say to them when they don't know how to do that process? What's the best way or what avenue do you take to, you know, be able to vet tenants before you place them in? So I take applications through avail.co or Zillow. So I wouldn't do any like handwritten applications or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Once they do the application online, it'll come back their background check and their credit check. And then what I look for is on-time payments. I look for at least a decent credit score but if it's lower, then I look at what the debt is. And then I'm looking at their income, making sure it's three to four times or more what the rent is. And then also looking at, this is just for personal preference, like their their living history, just trying to get an idea if this is a tenant that's just on the road, just looking for a place you know, for a year and then they're going to move again. So I can just think for the future if I'm going to have to turn it over in a short period of time. And also looking out for um, if it's if it's multiple tenants as well. So the with the with the criminal or the the like criminal background history, um, I would say the only thing I'm like against is like sex offenders. That would be the only thing I'm not trying to put in my property. Right. Yeah, and it's not understandable. Just want to make sure the, you know, make sure you're not bringing something to the neighborhood, especially as you owning the property as not an owner and you, and there's other owner occupied uh, properties on the street. It's um, it's something to look out for the community, and you're trying to, you know, make sure you're not bringing hindrance to the community. So that's. That's fairly understandable. So the next question I have is, what do you say? All right, when you say it, when you say it, low credit scores. So what's your what's your cutoff where you where you consider, okay, this is a great credit score. This is a uh credit score that's uh lower than my liking. I gotta do some more investigation. So what's what's your over underline? Yeah, so today, for example, like I just received probably the lowest credit score applicant. Uh well. Let me let me take that back. I in the when I the first one I received was horrible. It was a five hundred and eleven 
and the uh it wasn't just her credit score it was like she had debt in collections she had debt overdue past due and so it was more so the history it was overdue payments and debt and collections it just shows me that she does not make her payments compared to today i just got an applicant where her credit score is like 616 which is like decent it's still on the lower end but she has 100 percent on-time payments so that stood out to me you know knowing that you know her credit score might be low and there might be a reason for it maybe she's taken out more debt than she's allowed but she's still making all of her payments so as long as she's making her payments and she makes sure to do that then you know it, it gives me trust as a landlord and someone like that that she's going to be pay be paying me on time well, another thing i wanted to bring up was how you do your applications you said you always do them electronically and what's the number one reason why you do that so I like it electronically because it's more passive. Like you don't have to send them an application unless they request, you can send them like a link, but they can just go on the, the listing and then apply right there. And then they do everything right there. I mean, as soon as they're done, their income is uploaded, their background check is uploaded, their credit check is uploaded. And then you just have to, you get an email, review it and then if if they're good you just approve it now, you said the criminal in there the criminal or background and their credit check is uploaded it's a cost to pull those reports so who's right. who's responsible for that cost so the the tenant in this case is responsible and like there are obviously ways to you could cover that cost like on a on avail.co it gives you that option but if you're going to be covering the cost for all these applicants you're going to be racking up hundreds of dollars just to find a tenant so better to push that off but i will say that the cost on zillow is a lot is the cheapest one i've found which is 35 bucks right yeah so america that's the real reason why he passed he does it electronically because he ain't trying to pay that cost <laughs> well, <laughs> well yeah that well i mean because you could do it but i will say this though like because electronically like it it does everything for you if you do it on paper no then, absolutely absolutely you know I mean? absolutely i just like, tease it yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no it, it makes it makes more sense i mean this is not the you know pony express days you gotta you mail them an application you gotta wait two three days for them to get it then they fill it out Maybe you're not fill it out. Then they mail it back. Right. And then you still got to do the uh, the checks and things like that. And then so. So, yeah. So and then the last thing I want to want to bring up is I mean, this is this for me. For me, it's. I think the unit, the unit you have available is a one one. What is the max amount of occupants that you're going to allow in the unit? I would say like two and a child, so three occupants. So like a couple and a child makes sense. Um, or even if it's, say, a couple with like an infant and a child, and it's just because I think of what I would do in a situation like that if I just needed a place to stay, you could set up a place to sleep in the living room, and the living room at the unit is big enough. Um, I mean... I used right. to yeah, I mean, uh, the unit is huge. Yeah. Compared to the one ones I have, that is huge. Right. So I just think of, you know, a couple could have an infant in the room with them. And then if they have a child that's like a little bit older, they could be in the in the living room. But I'm not trying to stick like, you know, seven people in that place. <laughs> like, right, right. Yeah. 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 And that's, and that's about, that goes on the same lines as me is that, I will give people a place, you know, if they, the most I will do in that situation is two adults, you know, two adults that's together and then an infant. But I'm putting a timeline on that because I know that eventually they're going to need more space. Exactly. Um, now, I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, y'all got to get out because you got, you know, y'all keep making babies or something like that. But I know that it's going to be a timeline or the you know, the space is only so big. 
So yeah, but if I if it's too like me, if it's just too adult, I'm talking about in the one one situation. If it's too adult and they're not together, I'm not just doing. I'm just not doing the one putting it to make that happen because it's it's gonna be a headache and that's just me. It's just me. So, but no, that's 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 pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But just so you know, I wanted to give out people. You know, give them some insight to let them know everything is not all because um, this is the first property you have where you bought the property and it just just didn't roll right in in yeah. line how things are going. And that's why I just want to show people that everything is not all. Uh, I don't know what they call it, all. All fluffy and just so easy. Sometimes you got to go through things and. That's what happens. So you just go through vetting tenants, vetting tenants, vetting tenants. Usually, Alex got the magic touch. As soon as he buy, a tenant just walks in the next day. <laughs> and then, so this is a little different scenario. And that's yeah. really what goes on. It's not all going to be perfect. It's all not going to be, hey, you're going to buy a property and you're not going to have to rehab it like Alex uh, had, had to rehab it. You have to go through things. You got to be willing to go through the grind. It's not going to be... I'm buying in a uh, A class neighborhood that's going to get A class tenants every time. I mean, hell, you ask me, I'd be, I'd be evicted and turning over properties like it's cool. But sometimes you're just going to be in different situations, and and applications go come in, and you think you got a tenant, and that tenant, the the potential tenant doesn't work out, and you got to keep going, keep going, keep going. So, Alice going through all the uh, all the phases of emotion on this one. So it's pretty cool just so you can see it so not saying i want him to go through it but it's good that he go through it now until you know he have property 2056 and it had to be his first time going through it even like what the hell going on so pretty cool with all that being said guys if you like the video hit the like button leave a comment down below if you got any questions feel free to ask me share this video subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one